let me just start off by saying we've all been there. You hit the water to go out and target flounder for the day and it's just frustration. You're either not hooking up, you're facing the skunk at the end of the day, or you just can't land that fish. In this video, I'm gonna go through five tips that are gonna help you to hook more fish and get them in the net. So let's start off with tip number five, alter your presentation. And in this case, we're talking specifically about altering the presentation of the lure underwater when you're fishing for flounder. So you can see in the video clip that's playing right now, I'm using different retrieves as I pull this in. I get a little twitch, twitch pause, and right there I get the first hit. And I'm not going to stop with that presentation. Um, there's another twitch, twitch pause, and you're gonna see another twitch, twitch, and then I'm gonna change it just a little bit. I'm gonna set it back and go in a little bit more rapid, and that's when I hook up with the fish. So in a lot of cases, people will go out and they'll jig with the same style throughout the entire time that they're out there. They're sometimes doing a consistent, constant, rapid jigging. Uh, sometimes they're doing what I just did right there, which is the twitch, twitch, pause, uh, or some variation of that. Some people do a drag and bounce on the screen right there. You can see I just did a drop and sit. I just let it sit on the bottom for a moment and that's where I got the hit. Uh, you can also just do a slow bounce. But the key is don't get locked into just one style of presentation. No matter what you see on YouTube or on videos or what people tell you, different retrieves and different presentations of that lure will affect different fish in different ways. Uh, in this case on the screen, this, this is a good example. See the little jigs I'm doing there? I'm actually trolling, right? So I'm doing little, little sweeps of it and then I can let it go slack and I just do a straight troll and then you'll see I'll jig again. And then now I jig and that's where I get the hit and I'm picking it up. So not getting bites does not necessarily mean that there are no fish beneath you. Sometimes it just comes down to getting creative, changing the way that you're jigging, changing the way that you're presenting that lure underwater, and that will change the perspective of the fish that, that you're looking to target. And maybe, just maybe, you're gonna get one or two more fish to jump up and grab that bait. Tip number four is a simple one, drop back. A lot of people don't do this and it's actually difficult to do if you're fishing with bait. But in this case, I'm fishing artificials. I have gulp baits on there and just check out on the screen. You're gonna see right here a nice hit right there and I miss the fish. I immediately drop back. You can see right there, I let the line back out. It hits bottom, jig it off. And now I'm jigging it about, you know, trying not to rest it on the bottom, but jigging it just above the bottom. Uh, with a really slow twitch and there it goes again and I miss it again and you see I reeled a little bit and I should not have so I go back to the bottom drop it straight back let the line out get the jig going again and now I drive it home and now I'm hooked up with it so important for you to remember flounder will come back if they're interested and they hit an artificial especially you know you're not losing the whole artificial drop it back let it back down to the bottom and continue with your retrieve or continue with your presentation and you're going to pick up more fish this is another one where i dropped it back after having a couple of nice hits and i end up pulling up another fish right here um, that i didn't expect ended up being a nice keeper at the end of a tough day Tip number three, head down. And this one is near and dear to my heart because this is the most violated rule that I, that, I, that I do. I make this mistake all the time and I do not keep the head of the flounder in the water when I'm retrieving it. Look at right here on video. You can see not only was it thrashing at the top and doing those head shakes right at the top of the water, uh, breaking the surface, but I also lifted its head out of the water to get it into the net. And I do it all the time. If you've watched any of my videos, you will see that it's a consistent uh, source of frustration. Look, I even let that jump right over the net. Um, I do do it correctly, but it's a big reason why I lose a lot of fish. And I mean a lot of fish this way. Uh, I do blame it on the fact that I have uh, a net that I'm not comfortable with. I have a rod that is long enough to use in the kayak and what I prefer to use on the kayak. but probably too long to net some of these fish without high sticking and I naturally try to avoid that. And I can assure you I'm much different in a boat, but that right there is the example of what happens. They have that rapid head shake. That's how you know you have a fluke on. And once they hit the top of the, the water, they hit the surface and they're able to get clear of the water and start shaking that head, 
it just greatly increases the chances that they're going to be able to shake that hook free and get off of that line before they hit the back of the net. So uh, as you can see, I've been lucky uh, with a lot of these, these bigger fish. I've been able to drive the hook home through some, through some bone uh, into some really good spots. Uh, but you definitely want to be pulling them in with their head underwater to reduce the chances of losing them. Tip number two is near and dear to my heart and it is find the 10%. Research shows that 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water and that's what this is all about. There are different ways that you can find that water and it all comes down to with an ambush predator fish like a flounder to finding the structure that's under the water. You can do it visually as you can see on the screen now where you can look for changes in the water. You can see it's, it's glassy in one area and then there's a little rougher edge around the outside. You can find the eddies. Or you can use maps like Navionics or Sea Maps where you can see the contours on the bottom of the, the water column. Uh, and it's all about finding the differences in the structure on the bottom. So in this case on the screen you can see in a previous video I was going through how to identify those areas. You look for the lines that are closer together, those show a more severe drop. Uh, whenever there's space in between, it is a flatter area. So you can see there are a lot of flat areas in there. Uh, in this view, you can see a nice hole right in the middle of all this flat area. And that's the, that's the type of structure that you want to look for when you're looking for flounder. Again, they are ambush predators. They want to set up and they want to attack something from an unseen area. So they want to bury themselves in the sand and as something passes by, they want to jump up and grab it. So look for areas that are going to funnel bait, look for areas that are going to provide shelter for the flounder to hide, ledges, differences in elevation, structure. Once you find that, you're going to find the fish. And that brings us to tip number one, and that's slam it home. And I'm specifically talking about the hook set. And you're going to see in these clips, when you're fishing artificials especially, the hook set is critical. Flounder will know as soon as they put a bait into their mouth, whether it's real or if it's artificial, even if it's gulp, even if they're attracted to gulp like they are, once they put it in their mouth, they're gonna realize very quickly it's not a natural bait and they're going to spit it out. So as soon as you feel that hit, as soon as you feel that weight, you need to drive that home and drive it home with enough power to drive that hook into the bone, through the joints, into the flesh so that it's not getting away. Remember, they're not your friends. They're what you're targeting. You need to put that hook into them, put it in fast, put it in hard, and that's how you're gonna get those hookups. Don't go for this sit and wait and then think about setting the hook and set the hook. Feel the strike and drive it home. So there you have five tips that will help you not only get more bites, but to land more fish. So put them into use, see what they do for you. Popping up on the screen right now, I have a playlist on targeting and catching flounder that you should check out. Also have a video that would be interesting to you. If you've liked this video, a like, a share, a comment is always appreciated. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.